resurrection, my resurrection and my life, my resurrection, my resurrection and my life, Lord Jesus. Resurrection, my resurrection, my resurrection and my life, my resurrection, my resurrection. my knees I bow and with my tongue I confess that Jesus Christ is the almighty God when with my knees I bow and with my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the almighty God with my knees I bow and with my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the almighty God. My resurrection, my resurrection and my life. My resurrection, my resurrection and my life. My resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Resurrection, my resurrection and my life, oh Jesus. When the finished work of the cross, but the finished work of salvation, for oh, the finished work of the cross brought life and love and healing to me the finished work of the cross the gift of God given for me the finished work of the cross Finished work of salvation, finished work of the cross, brought life and love and healing to me. For the finished work of the cross, the gift of God given for me. When it is finished, it is still Christ the victor revealed. When it is finished, it is still Christ the victor. Cross, got the finished 
Oh, for a grave, where is your victory? Christ the King has set me free. Oh, grave, where is your victory? The King of Kings has rescued me. Oh, grave, where is your victory? Christ the King has set me free. Oh, oh, oh. Raised up together with you, Lord Jesus. Raised to newness of life by you. Oh, 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 In the liberty Christ has purchased for me Yes, I will stand fast In the liberty Where Christ has set me free Oh, I will stand fast In the liberty Christ has purchased In the liberty where Christ has set me free, oh, for it is finished, it is sealed. Christ, the victory revealed, it is finished, it is. Victory. It is finished. It is sealed. Christ, the victory. For the finished work of the cross. But the finished work. Of salvation, the finished work of the cross brought life and love and healing to me. The finished work of the cross, the gift of God given for me.
Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord Almighty God, we praise you, Jesus, the Lord, oh Jesus. Almighty God, O oh Lord, we worship you, Lord Jesus, we worship you. The resurrection. My resurrection and my life, Jesus Christ, who raises up the dead. The resurrection, my resurrection and my life, Jesus Christ, who raises up the dead. Lord, we worship you. Good morning, everybody. You know, you're here today because somebody invited you. And that somebody is Christ Jesus, the Almighty God. And He wants to make you whole. Because until you find Him, you're not whole. You hate, you envy. You live in jealousy and covetousness. You got to live in a complaint and a murmur. Show me a human being that does it. And from this comes fighting and wars and all the rest of the stuff that goes on in the framework of humanity. God wants to make you whole. He wants to give you life. Jesus came to show us an amazing, glorious, majestic life a quality of life that you might even say could, well, in many respects, is superior to a quantity of life, the quality of it. Men, when you, when you were born into this world, you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity every day to be taught to be just like the devil, to live in a demonic world and a demonic life. And so people have all the things that they deal with. And all the issues that they confront. No one needs to convince you of that. You ride in the big middle of it. Up over your eyebrows in it. And the Lord wants to set you free. The Lord didn't come for any other purpose at any time in all the history of mankind. Other than to show them, look, there is another way to live. He came and he revealed himself to all Israel, a whole nation, more than a million people had the revelation of the living God. You know, I hear people talk about how that Jesus Christ came in and appeared to them, and that's wonderful, and I there's many who he did come and reveal himself to. And, I mean, I set that as a presence that gra grabs a hold of my heart, and it makes me covetous to have the same event happen in my life in a way where I get to physically see him. I mean, I've seen him spiritually. I know him spiritually. I know him by his presence. I know him by the love that he brings. 
I know him by the peace that he brings. I mean, when he shows up, huh? I mean, I, you just know that he's in the room. And, and the Father's just given us that ability. And, of course, he lives and dwells in our life. And, my, that's better than seeing him with our physical eyes, having him living and dwelling in our lives. But God came and revealed himself to an entire nation and audibly spoke his voice out to them, declaring to them who he was, saying, guys, you can't live like you've been living anymore, running after all this superstition and all this idolatry and all this mixing it up with demonic things. You can't go coveting your neighbor's wife, stealing from one another, lying to each other. That ain't life. These are the Ten Commandments. We, po we postured it in a wrong way from an English translation. We postured in a wrong way. The Lord appeared to prove the heart of man to set his awe before us so that we would not sin. So we would not live a life of death. Sin, we, people, it is a life of death. It is a life of destruction. Every, everything it touches, it destroys. Jesus Christ came for the single purpose of dying on the cross so that anybody who wants out of the demon race, which is worse than a rat race, huh? anybody who wants out of the mess, you have an access, a door. It's open before you. You can walk in. Now, people have made a religion out of Jesus, and that's why... They don't like to listen to me talk because I'm not going to make a religious out, religion out of Jesus. I'm not going to give you an excuse for going on and continuing in your demonic affairs. We are calling you out of darkness into light. This is what Jesus did. He came, called call us out of darkness into light. He came and he called us out of hate into love. Not just on Resurrection Sunday. Not just on service days. He came, he called us out of, out of condemnation out of fear, into peace, relationship with him. You know, many people have heard the joyful sound, and they didn't want it. God looked at man in sitting in darkness, lost in, in sin, and suddenly the glorious light appeared. And you know what happened? Many men love darkness rather than light, because they like sin. They like evil. And then they're going to blame God, say, oh, well, you know, if he's a loving God, he wouldn't do this and he wouldn't do that. You know, why don't you get your notepad out and write down how God's got to change so you'll like him more. Just get your notepad out and just say, well, no, God, if you were just a little bit more like this, if you're a little bit more tolerant of this, you're a little bit, you know. And find out what God has got to be so that you will really like him. And then look at that for a while. And decide whether or not you want to live in the universe that you've created. Because I guarantee you, you'll be the only one. Maybe you and a couple of people, I don't know, but I, probably just you. I want to live in, in the universe that Father's created, in the world that God's created. And he's given you an invitation written in his blood. The cross without the resurrection would not be the gospel. And the resurrection without his ascension to where he's now seated at the right hand of the throne, would still not be the gospel. Because he's king of kings and lord of lords right now. You can ignore him if you want, but he is absolutely sovereign God Almighty, reigning right now from the throne of heaven. So let's say, well, if he's reigning, then why is all this hellacious stuff and mess going on? Because people are choosing it. God's making a separation right now. He's giving people God in his mercy. Don't try to complain against God. Act like he's not merciful here. God's giving people a choice, an opportunity to choose what they want to do with their lives. He's choose, he right now is right up in your situation, in your life. And he's beckoning you and he's examining you right now. And it doesn't matter whether you're sitting here or you're over somewhere in Asia or Africa or Europe right now watching this on the web. And even you might be watching it days later. I just had a person tell me that they've had the most severe chronic asthma. And it has been a continual... I mean, can imagine having a, a nose run for two years and tears coming out of your sinuses and out of your eyes for two years? She was watching... A, a YouTube 
that wasn't even on the service that we were ministering. It was days previous. And she felt a heat come across her forehead. Like just a, just a stretch of heat right across, a band of heat across her forehead. Instantly and totally he cured and healed. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. God's word is not limited to... A, those declarations of the gospel are not limited to a space and, huh, to a distance or to a time. I mean, tell you right now, the word that God spoke 2,000 years ago when he sent his only begotten son, when God Almighty was made flesh, is just as powerful right now as it was then. And in many respects, we might say it's even more powerful. People can do what you can do what you want. Don't get mad at me just because Jesus died for you. Don't get mad at me just because he come to set you free from you. Don't get all upset at me because I'm declaring to you God's goodness and God's grace and God's mercy extended towards you to change you from your honor self. Don't get upset at me about your problem and your issue that you up in awe every single day. Father's called us into a place of glorious splendor and majestic living, a quality of life that goes beyond anything, has no strife, no envy, no hate, no malice. Come on, man. It's an extraordinary life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have an extraordinary life. He said, all that came before me are nothing but thieves and robbers. I've come that you might have life and have an extraordinary life, abundant life. Today he's going to plead with you, he's going to talk to you, and you're going to do whatever it is that you're going to do. You're either going to bow your knee and say, God, I recognize that my life is a life full of sin and hate and evil, and I don't want it anymore. Or you're going to say, hey, I recognize my life is full of sin, hate, and evil, and I like it, and I don't want to change. God needs to change. Or you can say, you can just simply respond to his love and his grace and his mercy and come running into this wonderful place, huh? Called the heavenly realm, called the entrance into a new life, a new creation, being made a new creature. All the old will pass away. Amen. Yes. And the new will come. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we love springtime. We love springtime because the new comes. But this is a new that comes that doesn't, that doesn't pass away with the heat of the summer. This is a, a, a new that comes that doesn't die and fade, or fade with, the, with the cold of the fall or completely go into dormancy with the temperatures of the winter. This is a life that doesn't fade away. And God wants to put your reservation in today. He wants to get you all set up. Huh? Hey, anybody going to go on vacation? You going to take a trip? You, go, you better make yourself a reservation where you're going, especially if it's in back of Switzerland. Get into Switzerland this time of year. Everybody's going to Switzerland. And uh, if you don't get your invitation in the hotels quickly in the Switzerland, you, not, you go there, you're going to sleep out on the ground or in some rental car. Huh? Father, why don't you get your reservation in the heaven right now? Because I'm telling you right now, I don't know when he's coming. He may be coming today. I'm praying, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. He may be coming 200 years from now. He may be coming 1,000 years from now. I don't know. But I do know that you very soon, and it may be today, and it certainly ain't going to be more than 100 years, are going to pass from this life into the next, and you're going to stand before Almighty God. And you better, re you better study for your finals if you expect to pass the test. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Huh? Somebody said, why you, why, why you had the Bible open? I'm studying for my finals. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm finding out exactly what Father has purposed for my life. And so today I'm going to talk to you about that, okay? Yes. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. God the Father, he wants to change you. 
Huh? And I'm going to tell you right now, the resurrection, the crucifixion, the resurrection, not about an Easter bunny and a chicken egg and how they ever came together. I don't know, it was about as funny as a, you know, a conifer got in there somehow too. I don't know. The reality of it is, people, all these distractions going on, the reality of it is, is Christ Jesus, our Passover, Lamb, came was to be sacrificed on an altar for you and me called the cross of Calvary. And there... At that moment in time, he released the grace of God that is the means by which you are cleansed and washed from every stain of sin, released from the power and the authority of it so that you can live a brand new life in him. People want the blood of Jesus Christ to be somehow a means or a provision for them to live the same kind of life that they've been living and still be right with God. What, what sense does that make? God came to deliver us from our slavery even as he sent Moses to deliver Israel out of their bondage and out of their slavery. God sent his only begotten son to live, deliver us from our bondage and our slavery to sin. There is no more wicked state to be in than to be under the power of sin and death. People said, oh, we all children of God. Not so. God's looking, Christ Jesus, and looking in the face of those who are part of of a, 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 a law, a mosaic law, a, a, a covenant that God established with the descendants of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, known as Israel. And he's looking in the face of these men who are supposedly the leaders of what they turn the grace of God into nothing but religion. And he says, your father is the devil. What a Sunday morning service ministry. You know, what a sermon topic to preach on. Your father is the devil. And the works of your father you shall do. Jesus' words. What he said, John chapter 8, beginning in verse 20. You can read it. But the emphasis is on verse 28. This is what the Lord said. Everybody wants to be children of the, of, of the Lord. Listen, listen, dear people. If God was to lower his standards and allow wicked men into the kingdom, heaven would be no different than it is right now. There would be no difference be the same bloodshed, the same hate, the same wickedness, the same evil, the same tyranny of men oppressing men. I don't want that. You want that. I mean, if you want some more, just move to Damascus, Syria right now. Some of the satellite towns of Syria, if, you, if you're not getting enough hell as it is, just move to Syria. You can move to Mosul. Uh, for other, a couple of other really hot spots. Right now, there's problems again in the Congo. There's places in the Congo. You want some more problems? You want some more trouble? There's revolution again in the Congo with the change of the presidency. Are you listening to me? Yes. Huh? Yes. Father has given us this wonderful relative, as it were, peace right now in the Western world. A relative peace. Amen. Won't last long. It's not going to last long. People will be back to blowing themselves up. Looking at death, destruction, and mayhem. It's just, it's just a cycle. That's what men do. And restrictions and laws and devastation. NATO was ultimately formed as a, an alliance of nations because people had gotten so sick of watching, going around picking up body parts from devastating war after war after war in Europe. And you just get so full of it, you get so overwhelmed by it, you can't stand to see nobody else blown up. So everybody says, let's just try to find some kind of common cause so we can work together on things that are a common interest and then we won't stop, we'll stop killing each other for a while. About to come to an end. The church is going to come into a place where they're going to, everybody's going to start praying and crying out to, for the Lord Jesus to come. They're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be talking about how they're going to, you know, go through the tribulation and be mighty. People can't go through tribulation now and be mighty. They're going to be praying, oh, Lord Jesus, come now. And, but through all of that, I'm just trying to paint a picture for you just to convince you this morning of who man is and what man is and why Jesus looked at them and said, your father is the devil. Because once again, that's just the heart of man. The heart of man is always creating this state of rejection against God's life and against God's goodness and God's peace. And he's inviting you and me to come on in to it and have joy 
abundant. So many people say, oh, the guy's up there dancing on the platform. What's he doing? I promise you, I'm not for entertainment. There's so many people, they just want, they want preachers to be entertainment. You know, they, <laughs> they want to be, you know, kind of, they want to be entertained. Well, you know what? I barely even noticed that you were here. I'm just captivated with Jesus. I've been given this wonderful, brand new life in God. I mean, I called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like the Bible says. And just like the Bible says, God came, he changed my heart. He changed my spirit. Hallelujah. He filled me with his Holy Spirit. I'm telling you right now, I went from darkness to light. I went from death to life. I went from a messed up life to an extraordinary life. I mean, I'm just one data point, one witness out of multiple, multiplied hundreds of millions. There's over 200 million Holy Ghost filled people right now with a Pentecostal experience right now in China. 200, over 200 million witnesses just in one nation, China, that try to wipe God, completely erase God from existence. Well, you know what they did? They erased some religion from existence, but they didn't erase God from existence. You can erase religion and more power to you, but you can never erase God because he's going to move no matter what men try to do, no matter what power, no matter what convincing arguments, God's going to move with his glory, with his grace, with his signs and wonders. He's going to touch you, touch people in a place that nobody else can even access, not even yourself. And you're going to know, wait a minute, something's happening here. Amen. This is something supernatural. This is something superior to that. This is something that something goes beyond who I am and everything that I've encountered up to this point. That's God. He comes to us in his love. He comes to us in his goodness. He comes to us in his mercy. And he's constantly creating new things. Yeah. New things. New things. <laughs> we love being out on the ranch looking at all the new baby calves. You know, looking out... We don't have sheep or goats, but looking at other people have those and new baby lambs and all the new little chicks running around right now and all the animals. Everything God's made with a unique personality. Evolution has no model genetically, nor does it even have a model, even come close to having a model for how all these creatures have all these unique personalities. I mean, have you ever watched the crow? He's a crow is just happy. He's cocky, but he's happy. Have you ever watched it compared to a chicken, to an eagle? Have you ever looked at the difference between the dog and the horse and the cow? It's amazing. I know you guys live in a concrete jungle, and it's hard to see anything but a wall. But listen, I tell you right now, there is a life going on around here. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, look at those roses. Smell them. I mean, come on. Who put that fragrance in there? Some kind of evolution little thing for no reason, for no purpose. Give me a break. As a real estate agent said, you believe that? I got some swamp land you'd really like. Nobody believes that. Nobody believes that nonsense. No one. Just another idol for men to bow down to and try to explain away God. But the more people try to explain away God, <laughs> the more his love and his grace and his mercy goes, hello, here am I. Hello. <laughs> huh? You know, we were, just, we were just at a meeting and we're getting ready, we're headed to Livingston, Zambia. We we're just at a meeting with all the tribal chiefs of Zambia. The majority, uh, were the main tribal chiefs of Zambia. And their, their emperor, which is the king of kings, is the, is the king or the emperor of the Congo. He was there. Everybody's seeking Jesus. The emperor of the Congo says, you know, I want to bring the move of God to my nation before I die. The Congo. Hallelujah. Huh? Huh? You're not shutting God out. I don't care where you are at. Try to shut him out. Middle East, people try to shut him out. God's moving in Iran. You don't hear that on CNN. God's moving in North Korea. You don't hear that on Fox News, which is worse. Because we're guarded against CNN. We're wide open. We think that, you know, Fox News is the truth and nothing but the truth. My goodness, it's just as bad, if not worse, right? Men, what are men? Tell me what men are. Hey, somebody got it right. Liars. Liars. I said, oh, well, that is really a, you know, a, a very jaded view of humanity. Really? You're kidding me. 
It's not a jaded view of humanity. That's the lesser of the evils. God has given to us the truth. His word is the truth. And the truth sets us free. Now, once you look in your Bibles, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. And, and this is so important to you because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to come face to face with this. He's going to scare you to death. He's going to scare you to death. Hmm? Anybody come face to face with a, a big black bear? Anybody come face to face with a big grizzly? There's some foul stinking smelling things sometimes. Especially they just got out of a dead carcass. Sometimes they eat berries and they don't smell so bad. But it's terrible to come up against one that just got out of a dead carcass, been dead and bloated and whatnot, and then they stand there looking at you with that smell on them. Huh? There's a lot of crazy things go on in life. But I'm going to tell you right, and there's scary things go on in life that maybe you've encountered. But there's something far more scary and terrifying than that, which all heaven and earth kind of flee away from. And that's when Father's looking at and evaluating the situation with men who have rejected his love and his grace. Who just with the high hand had said, no, I don't believe what you're saying. No, I don't want your life. I'm going to go with my religion. Because God, the Lord's not offering us another religion. He's offering us his, the splendor and the, majest, the majesty of his life. He came to show himself and reveal himself at Mount Sinai. So that he could show the majesty and splendor of his life and say, guys, don't live in that darkness anymore. He came... Christ Jesus came 2,000 years ago to show us the splendor and the majesty of the life of the Father and say, this is your life. I'll give you this life. You can live your life in me and I'll live my life in you. Think about it. It'd be one thing if the Lord would say, come on, you can be with me and you can live your life in me. Right? Because that's beautiful. That's great. So I'm with him. I'm with him. I'm with him. But he says, also, I'm going to come and live in you and I'm going to be with you. Where the Lord God is saying, I'm with him. Now that turns the tables right there. That's, whoa, that is amazing. Where he's given us an opportunity to have such a relationship. Where God has not spared any expense to redeem you because he loves you so much. To redeem you because he loves you so much. And then you're going to reject that and say, well, I don't agree. I don't agree. You know, it's amazing to hear an 18-year-old kid say, I don't agree. And he failed every math test that he ever took. Just to basically kind of, you know, size up the IQ for just a minute. Right? But he don't agree. Give me a break. Father in his love and his mercy went something beyond all that the intellect could even do. All that men could figure out. And he extended his love towards us. He created the expanse of the universe with his word. But to redeem you, he valued it even higher. His word wasn't good enough. He poured out his blood. And to reject that? Oh, somebody said, oh, I don't reject that. I just don't agree with you, preacher, that we're supposed to live these holy and righteous lives. No, you messed up. The majestic life of splendor and glory. You messed up. You misinterpreted holy and righteous. Oh, you think you're holier than thou. No, we're talking about his glory, his presence. That's what we're talking about. You've, misde you've misdefined terms. Stop it for a second. The Lord's come to give us his life. His life. His life. To have the life of Christ Jesus. Not to have religion. Not to say, oh, I've been in the way, you know, for all these years. I gave my life to whatever. You know, I confessed Jesus Christ as my Lord so many years ago. No, no, no. A change. Where you become a new creation. You become a new creature. In, in, in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. Amen. This is it. Yeah, Upon these, the second death, the power of death, has no hold, Amen. no authority. Amen. God has come to seal us, to seal you with the Holy Ghost, to mark you with his name in your forehead. Amen. Where you're marked, where you've been marked by a satanic power, where you've been cursed by the power of sin. Somebody said, oh, some witch doctor, some voodoo guy, whatever. They cursed me. You cursed yourself worse than any voodoo man can curse you. You cursed yourself with rejecting God, with your choices of sin and iniquity. But God's come to destroy the curse. 
to break off the curse so you're no more cursed with death, no more cursed with hell. Today we're here, we're talking about the resurrection, and I, I love how Paul talked and how Paul brought this whole beautiful act of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and encapsulate it into one verse in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12. Open up your Bibles if you have a Bible. This is the time that you're allowed to use your electronics if you brought them. No texting allowed huh? unless you're texting God himself and he's texting back. Huh? No, it's just a new time for you to just interact with the Lord. Hear him talk to you. He wants to talk to you. Oh, well, God, talk to me. Hello. He's talking to you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're going to be a part of the first resurrection, that's where your body dies. They put you in a casket and you decompose in there. Forgive me if it's too scary for you, but it's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to you. Good news is you're not going to be there. Amen. Well, it might be bad news. It's good news if you die in Christ Jesus. Right. Yes. It's bad news if you die right. having rejected him. Right. Having rejected him. Yeah. And there's not a play person in the United States of America in the Western world that didn't have a chance to accept Jesus. Right. I can't help it that there was misrepresentation, but everybody's heard about Jesus. Now, there's places that we go, there are many people who say, who? I think I've heard of that name. Say it again. Jesus. And we've got to break that down for them because we're like in a place in Kashmir. Kashmir, there is no known Christian. They say that there's 0.01% Christians there. We just haven't found any. That's the place you need to go tell people about Jesus. That's where evangelism is no longer redundant. Hallelujah. Can't wait to get back to Kashmir. Can't wait to get back into the program. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, if, if the Lord released me, I'd spend the rest of my life in the Congo. But he's still in his mercy, screaming and hollering, pleading and begging people in the United States of America. Because he's just a God of love and passion and determination. He wants, to, he wants you to have his life. He wants to fill you with his goodness. Have you opened up your Bibles? Let me get my Bible, just so you can see, you can follow the leader. You know, people say, oh, well, he was just preaching. He never opened up his Bible. He was just talking. No, man, I'm quoting scriptures. Hello. I'm telling you, I'm giving, you know, I'm giving you an easy translation a lot of times. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God, the Holy Ghost, wants to touch you right now. In fact, he's touching you. I don't think that I can't see a person in this place that he's not wrestling with right now. He's touching you. And some of you get to squirming, acting like you're not paying attention. All you're doing is telling on yourself, it's going right to the, it's going, it's it right to the, to the very center of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to take and make you, uh, change you from a sinner to a saint. Amen. From something unholy to holy. Amen. From something unrighteous to righteous. Amen. From a beggar and a pauper to a prince and a king. Hallelujah. True. Amen. Huh? Yes. He wants to train you how to live that life of nobility and glory Amen. and divinity Amen. far above anything that belongs to noblemen and princes and kings. Yes. And God the Holy Ghost himself has come to be our instructor, our tutor. Amen. Hallelujah. Our mentor. And we want to just go off and do whatever it is that, you know, people think is, is a good thing to do. If everybody's saying they liked it, I'm going to tell you right now, it's bad. It's bad. Don't get involved and say, I went over there and I saw that movie. It was great. You would just really love it. Don't even go there because I promise you, it's an advertisement from hell. If the world likes it, you and I, whose hearts have been changed, well, we're going to be grieved by it. I have a testimony that I've been sealed by the Holy Ghost. I have the spirit of holiness. I was a sinner, now I'm a saint. Amen. God came and gave me the gift of righteousness. This is what the resurrection means. To be raised up from the dead is something that is an event that is going to happen to every human being who dies. They're going to be raised from the dead, either to an eternal death or to an eternal life. 
And it all depends on what you choose. You can choose to be dead. Those who have Christ Jesus are alive. Those who do not have Christ Jesus are dead. That's what God said. He that hath the Son, hath possesses Christ Jesus, the only begotten Son, has life. He that does not have the Son, Christ Jesus living in them, because that's, that's what the power of the resurrection did. It brought resurrection life to you and me. It, I mean, that's change. I once was one way, now I'm a different way. And you can't tell me that it's just my opinion. This is what God's Word says and has been reproduced billions of times. Reproduced. With the same witness, whether you're up at the 88th parallel in the Northwest Territory among the Inuit or down in Argentina among the Conchas or out in the the backwoods of the Congo in Africa or in Nanyang in the heart of China in Asia or in the Himalayas in Bhutan in the valley of Bhutan or in the Himalayas in the Srinagar Valley in Kashmir the same same results when somebody calls upon the name of Jesus Christ. The name above every name. One day, I was standing in, on the border of Nanyang, China, and North Korea. And, I, and I, this was when Kim Sung-il was still alive. And a guy came across the border, probably a young, he was probably early 60s. And he was getting a, a permission slip to come across a... a it was like a five-hour pass to come across to get medication for his family. And he walks up to us, and he first thing he does is he shows his pen of Kim Sung-il, and he sings the praises of Kim Sung-il because it's a cult. It is a cult kingdom. Kim Sung-il, God, created everything. And they worship him, not as... They worship him as a god. They don't, you know, basically and devoted to him as a ruler. He's dead. <laughs> dead. Their God's dead. I promise you their God is dead. Provable. And, you know, he's going off, and my translator's standing there talking to him a little bit. I said, I want you to translate this for me now, word for word. And I didn't even get out. Have you ever heard of the person Jesus. I got right at that place. The anointing had preceded my testimony of Jesus because God the Holy Ghost can anticipate when you get in race, say Jesus. <laughs> and this man who was all smiles and singing the praises of Kim Sung Il began to weep. And when I said Jesus, he began to tremble under the power of God. Instantly and totally, the same authority of that name. That name is above every name. I know that it has been so, it has been so profaned in the Western world. It seems like it's lost its power. It's been so mocked and slandered and so ridiculed and so misrepresented by religion. It's, his name is still the most powerful Amen. name that exists. Amen. And it doesn't matter if you say it in Espanol or Ivrit, which is Hebrew, or whether you say it in Afrikaans, or what, what do you say, what, doesn't matter what language you say it in, North Korean, English, it has the same power, same effect. Amen. You, people love to go around saying it in Aramaic instead of in Ivrit or Hebrew. They love to say Yeshua, which is Aramaic, instead of Yehoshua, which is Hebrew. And to think that, well, it's more potent if you say it in Aramaic. Well, if you, it's going to be more, well, that's just logical. It would be more potent than if you, by that, you know, logic, if it were, say it in Hebrew. No, no, no. It's potent in every language. Amen. In every language. Yes. Huh? When, when I hear the Papua New Guinean say, in long name, long Papa God, in long name, long Pekinini, it's still powerful. <laughs> powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Powerful. I mean, I've heard, I've heard preachers in the, in the backwoods of Papua New Guinea just get up and say, Papa God, come to you in the long name, long beginning. 
and the power of the Holy Ghost fill the place. Isn't this in a Yeshua, a Hoshua, a Jesus, a Yesu? Huh? His, his name carries such power and glory Amen. and splendor. Yes. God has highly exalted that name above every name. Why? Because he by himself destroyed every demonic hold, every demonic power, yeah. every principality, every power. What it looked like because people try to judge things after the sea and the eye. And after the sea and the eye, it looked like his life ended in tragedy that he was overcome by just a few men. That the kingdom of Rome was so powerful that it was able to subdue the kingdom of God. But no, 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 no. What, 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 look, what you were seeing just with the natural eye wasn't what was going on. He was released from that physical body so that he could go into the realms of the unseen and destroy destroy every power of darkness, every rebellion, every principality, every authority, every spiritual wickedness yeah. by his own self, by his yeah. own self. And deliver you and me from the prison Amen. of separation from God, being children of the devil, born in sin because of Adam's sin and because of Adam's transgression. But dear people, I want to tell you something. The obedience of Christ Jesus is of greater effect than the disobedience of Adam. People still wouldn't make the disobedience of Adam greater in power and effect than the obedience of Jesus. What sense does that make? You're telling me that somehow Adam is more powerful in, his, in the results of his disobedience, more effective than that of God made manifest in the flesh, that God himself, through the obedience of one, many are made righteous. If you don't know that scripture, it's Romans 5, 19. The gift of righteousness so that you and I could... He wipes the slate clean so we can have a new beginning. Our sins and iniquities, he remembers them no more. He gives us a new spirit and a new heart so that we can know him and understand him and relate to him. And he's not a foreign to, foreigner with foreign ideas and a foreign concept and a foreign culture. He puts his Holy Spirit on the inside of us to be, teach us, to train us in all the ways of his righteousness, which he gave to us as a gift, as a gift, imputed and imparted as a gift. Relational and ethical as a gift. Relational so that we may learn the ethics of it as a gift. Amazing. Positional. And experiential as a gift to experience the goodness of God, of his love, and how to love people when they hate you, how to treat them good when they persecute you. Somebody said, I want to grow in love. Then you're going to have to learn how to love people that hate you if you want to grow. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to do good. I mean, I found, this, I found this one secret. Like I had this person just telling me how bad and this and that and the other thing and how they thought I was this and that and the other thing. And I said, hey, I'm going to give you a cow. Talk about changing the subject. You're going to do what? Yeah, I'm going to slaughter a cow and give you a cow. Four or five hundred pounds of beef. How's that? Let me bless you. I'm telling you right now, the thing just, just cuts off. I mean, they say, I don't want it, whatever. But you know what? They want it. <laughs> uh, come on, man. And you, you, get to, you get to participate with God. You get to participate in resurrection life. Yes. See, if you want to be a part of the first resurrection after your body dies, you've got to be a part of it before you die. It's a decision yes. that you're making now sitting there in your body. Yes. It's a decision you're making now with the breath that you breathe. Yes. Which fundamentally, to shock you just a little bit, fundamentally is one of the clear witnesses of the spirit that you have, your breath. And not a human being knows how it works. We can talk about surfactant in the lungs, right? We can create models. It's first, you need to get that in like first year of physiology in undergraduate before you even get to medical school. So how do you get breath? Nobody knows how breath works. God breathed into a man. The Ruach. The breath, the spirit, the, room, the wind of life. Ooh, my money. Spirit's a whole lot more than that. But it's one part of us that when it goes, 
for the last time, you don't breathe in anymore. It goes. You got to make a decision before it goes of whether or not you want to be with God. He's looking for people who wants to be with him. He wants to be with you. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. He wants to be with you. If you respond to him, he will never give up on you. I don't care how messed up you are. He'll fix you up. Amen. But you got to participate. You have to participate. Huh? You give, you give, God will give you the free gift of salvation upon request. But if you continue to act like a devil, I'm going to tell you, it has profited you nothing. It was the gift of God in vain made void. But the gift of God brings with it the awareness of his presence and who he is and what he wants. And that results in Holy Ghost conviction and godly sorrow leads you to repentance. And you say, I don't want to be that way no more. Amen. I don't want to act that way no more. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to be just like you. Yes. I want to love like you. Yes. Good Father, he says, I'll give you joy unspeakable and full glory. I mean, think about getting, how, think about being so happy, nothing can make you happier. Are you up for this? To be made so happy that nothing can make you happier? Hello. Come on. This is Papa. He's so happy nothing can make him happier. He's teaching us how. Amen. He wants somebody said, oh, I know God and I love God and he loves me, but I don't like those Christians. No, you don't know him. <laughs> no, because you know him and you interact with him a while, he's going to fill you so much with his love, he'll make a, fish, a foot washing servant out of you. Yeah as well as a fisher of men. Huh? You'll love everybody, and especially God's people. Even the, one, even the honorary ones, just religious old Episcopalians. Huh? Or whatever. If that was your denomination, you know, forgive me. Some religious old Pentecostal. Huh? you love them. you say, let me wash your feet. Let me serve you. Because it's the love of God. The love of God will constrain you. We take hold of you. Amen. You'll love your wife all your days. <laughs> your children will grow up healthy and full of the Spirit. Amen. Yes. Thank you. And the grandbabies will come. I'll start with him. <laughs> the prophet Z. <laughs> the mighty man of God, John Samuel, who's sleeping. And their sons and daughters. And your whole, your whole life will be filled Hallelujah. with I mean, people who love to be with each other. My family is earmarked by the fact that we love to be with each other. People come visit and they'll stand around. People who are friends or strangers, they'll go, wow, your family really love being around each other. <laughs> we really do. Because we feel with the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Because we feel we've been born again. We've been made a new creation and we participated with learning love, with learning joy, with learning peace, with learning long suffering, suffering, with learning self-control. Hello, that's a dirty word. I know, self-control, dirty word, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it is a beautiful thing. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Yes. Colossians 2.12. I'm still trying to get there. Mande este limona. Kiri na moste. Halai bestivriti kala la mahosita. Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. Buried with him by baptism into his death. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. He will, it's so important that when you're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, you realize that you can only appropriately, you can only properly celebrate it because you raised up together with Amen. him. There is an inward resurrection where you're no longer dead. Separated from God, dead, separated, dead in your trespasses and sin. Of course, just hold your finger here, hold your finger here on this, because if you look right back over there in Ephesians, which is, a, which is you know, the twin epistle of Colossians, in Ephesians chapter 2, 
The scripture says, verse 1, And you hath he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sin. Made alive, raised up. That's, that's the same as being born again. Made a new creation, made a new creature, was dead, died, and was buried something old. Literally crucified in respect of that which God has done for us supernaturally and spiritually. Amen. Because this is the creed. Say, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Not being crucified, crucified. <laughs> I say it one more time. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. I'm buried with him by baptism into his death. I'm buried with him by baptism into his death. I'm raised up together with him. I'm raised up together with him. This is the confession of Jesus. This is what it means to confess Jesus Christ as your as almighty God. As your sovereign, almighty, and master of whom you are slave. Yeah. People want to make him Lord, but not Lord of all. They want to make him sovereign on Sundays and special holidays. <laughs> That's not the relationship that he purchased for us to have. So we're raised up together with him. We're alive together with him. And we're seated with him in a heavenly realm. Amen. I don't want to get to that part yet. But that's powerful. Yes. And to get to know that and to get to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Wow. To where no longer hate has any power over you. No longer is, do you have you know, a human reflex of retaliation. Yes. Huh? Yes. But you have a divine reflex of yes. blessing. Amen. Huh? Walking like God, talking like God, being the heirs of God, co heirs with Christ Jesus in character and disposition and manner and conduct and behavior where you no longer live unto yourself, but you live unto the majesty and splendor of his divinity and his person and his power. Huh? A prince or a princess to rule a kingdom is learned, is taught how not to serve their own interests, but to the state. To serve the nation of which they are sovereign. Every day they are trained in the etiquette and manner of how to hold their spoon and their fork and how to speak properly in every language that they have to be an ambassador to as a nobleman in their nation. Or as a prince or a princess or a more than that, a sovereign, a king or a queen. Holy Ghost, come teach you and I how to be something far more in representation of the kingdom and of the king of kings. Yes. In representation of those who are alive from the dead. That this is what it means to be made a new creation. This is what it means to be citizens of heaven. We want to make a religion out of it. And make it less than God has in his goodness and mercy blessed us with as heirs of God and co-inheritors with Jesus. Why would we want to make it less? Why would we want to try to find an excuse to continue to live in a demon, uh, to live a demon-run life when God wants to show us how to live the majesty and the splendor of a divine life, the life of the Spirit, to be led by the Holy Spirit, to walk in the Holy Spirit, to live by the Holy Spirit, to be the very housing of God, the temple of the Most High, the temple of the Holy Ghost, where God the Father dwells, where Christ Jesus dwells, the place where the holies of the holies have been moved from a tabernacle made with a hand into the heart of man. Amen. That's the truth. Yes. For which many verses of Scripture testify. And I pray today that your eyes would be open. You go, wow, I can have that. Amen. That just like that same power that same glory of God that raised Jesus up from the dead Amen. after he was three days and three nights. Yes. My wife is a morning person. I said, is it going to begin at the third day or is it going to end at the third day? She says, it's going to begin. No, 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 it was the end. It was three <laughs> days and three nights. He went down into hell. He went down into the pit. He went down into Sheol. He went down into Kabar, the grave the place of the departed peoples. And he preached the good news of liberation. And he, and he led captivity captive, those in prison there because of Adam's sin. And he ascended up on high. 
This is the resurrection. And this is the resurrection life. And granted to everybody who would receive resurrection life. Where that they're no longer held under the power of an earthly existence. Amen. Under the reign of sin. Just like the tyranny of Pharaoh. But now to live in the, under the majesty and the splendor of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, King of Glory, the Great I Am, El Elyon, the Most High, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. the Only Begotten, the Eternal Debar, the Word, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It changed me. He came to me as he wants to come to you and he totally transformed my life. The same salvation he gave to me, he wants to give to you right now. He wants to set you free. He wants to, he wants to make a beautiful creature out of you. Hallelujah. 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 Colossians chapter 3. Just look, I'm going to I'm gonna try to wrap this up. I know some of you have been in church right now longer than you have in your entire life. It's like, what's going on with this guy, this sermon? Does this have an end to it? <laughs> Listen, I come from a long line of revivalists, okay? Believe me. And we learn from the Apostle Paul that you really start the move of the Spirit after you've been preaching about five or six hours. Huh? That's how Eutychus got his name in the Bible, okay? Paul was a long time preaching. He, had, he took the wrong chair in the window seal. Huh? And he fell asleep, fell down dead. Paul went, raised him up from the dead, came back up, preached till morning. What a church meeting. Come on. Come on. That's when the Holy Ghost is moving. That's when the power of God's life is being revealed. That's when you're captivated by the presence of the Lord. You want more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have just a few minutes to talk you into this, says the Lord. Just give me a little bit more of your time. If you'll listen to him, if you'll hearken unto him, he will change your life. And if you've been changed, you'll, just find, you'll find strength. The strength of his might. His might is a word from the Greek language, kratos. Kratos is the sovereign, majestic power by which he creates everything. Kratos. I'll, I'll strengthen you with Kratos. <laughs> he got, like throws every power word in the Greek language at us and says, I'll give it to you. Yes. Every dimension of power. Amen. The ability to be an overcomer. Yes. The ability to walk with him. The ability to know him. The ability to represent him. See, salvation brings to us the life of Jesus. Amen. That's the new birth. And then he doesn't stop there. He wants to endue us with power from on high so that we can have the ministry of Jesus. So that you and I every day live in the life of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus. So if we get off the airplane and we see somebody you know, uh, has fallen down with a heart attack and they've dialed 911, they've got the, you know, they got the, uh, you know, the shock pads out, you know, the resurrectors out, you just walk over and say, in Jesus' name, be healed. And you, they just get right up. In Jesus' name, you're going to be fine right now. In Jesus' name. Set free. Whatever. We get to go around setting people free. Delivering them. It's easy to deliver people when they're in a, in a mess. Huh? When their cars flip twice and you're pulling them out, yeah, get them saved right there on the spot. I'm telling you right now. When, when somebody's about to die and they're grabbing their chest and a heart attack is a terrible pain and you can touch them and all that pain goes away immediately. Woo! You're not trying to talk somebody into something they don't want anymore. Are you listening to me? When somebody's having an epileptic fit and they're, and they're chewing on their tongue and you just breathe on them and say, Whoosh. and immediately Amen. they stop Amen. having the problem. Hey? Eh? Yes. Ooh. When somebody's completely mentally gone, mentally insane. I posted a picture this morning of a girl who was mentally insane in a crusade that we did foaming at the mouth, rolling supernaturally across a huge field that could hold over 15,000 people. Matted, torn clothes, matted, torn, matted hair. 
in Kathmandu, Nepal. Completely wild. Eyes rolled back up in her head, one eye open, one eye going straight, one eye rolled up in the back of the head. Try to do that. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. It's just completely demonic. And there she is. I, we had a picture of her. She's there. They took her. This is the next meeting. They took her. They cleaned her up. Her hair's all brushed out. Her face is shining. It's shining on that, on that picture you could see on my yes. Facebook I posted this morning. Because yes. I just saw, you know how Facebook say this, you posted this, you know, X many years ago. And I was captivated by it. I said, I'm going to post that this morning. Yes. Resurrection power came to her. Yes. Huh? I looked out over across the field and I saw this group of people running. They're running this way. Then they're running this way. <laughs> huh, baby? And then they're running back over this way. I'm like, what on earth is going on out there? And they're, they're running to keep up with this girl rolling. So we, Ann and I walked down there, and I saw her rolling, just foaming at the mouth. I said, you healed now in Jesus' name. I set you free. That's it. In English. No translator. She spoke only Nepali. Ah! Totally delivered. She didn't understand a single word I said. It was tongues to her. But that was all that was needed. The authority of a resurrected life. Yes. The authority, in other words, of Christ Jesus who raised up from the dead. He raised up from the dead and he not only ascended up into heaven, he came into my life. The resurrected Jesus is here in my life. He wants to be in your life and he wants to have a testimony and a proof that you start acting like him and living out his life. He wants to even give you more than that. He wants to give you an authority and a power to move and function in this ministry to represent that he is still the same Amen. Jesus. As he was then. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, I love those things. Hey? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. To see the witch doctors all woo, 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 da, 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 <laughs> calling birds down, you know, <laughs> doing their crazy stuff, right? <laughs> calling birds down, birds are dive bombing the people. <laughs> hey, Joshua? And everybody's freaking out. <laughs> and then watch them get knocked out under the power of God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like you just won the war, just, a, just captivated by the presence of the Lord, because he already did win the war when he rose up from the grave. Colossians chapter 3, one, verse 1 says, If you been be risen with Christ, this is what we're celebrating today. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's what God, that's what this is all about. His resurrection is all, he didn't, he didn't need for his own self to come and take on a human body and be rejected and crucified and, and, and buried for his own personal edification. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes. Hallelujah. He did it for you and me so that we would have this wonderful freedom, this liberty. Yeah. Hallelujah. Freedom to declare. Freedom to speak out those things that the Spirit of the Lord, God Almighty, has to say. The Lord wants to raise you up to be counselors to presidents and kings, to be counselors to states and to nations to make disciples out of them. He does. To where they call you in to the inner chamber of their council and say, what does the Lord say? Hallelujah. Father wants you to be the redeemer to your neighborhood when there are, there, when there are children that are, that are getting involved in gang stuff and, and getting involved in crime. And you walk in and you say, in the name of Jesus, you foul devil of hell, you leave yes. this life alone. Yes. And immediately their life Amen. has changed. Yes, Lord. Huh? Because <laughs> he raises up redeemers upon Mount Zion. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, who stands in the redemption of the only Redeemer, Christ Jesus. Amen. That, but we, we get to bring his redemption. That's why Paul, when he had a heavenly vision, the Lord Jesus said to him, I am going to send you to the nations to turn them from Satan to God. Yes. From death to life. Amen. Hmm? Yes. From <laughs> darkness to light. Yes. This is, wow. 
the authority of the redeemed. Amen. Because we're raised up together with him and we're seated with him in the heavenly realm. It can't be something less. It can't be, you know, uh, oh, you know, Ash Friday and, you know, Good Friday. And, and it wasn't even on Friday. Because you can't get three days and three nights between Friday and Sunday morning. You just can't. Somebody said, well, we're supposed to be worshiping the Lord on Saturday instead of Sunday. We worship the Lord on Sunday because he rose up from the dead on Sunday. Every Sunday we were, we were celebrating the resurrection. <laughs> Every Sunday. So oh, we're supposed to worship on Saturday. Well, worship on Saturday too. I mean, worship every day. Get in the meeting. Quit arguing about it. It's not what the Word of God's for to argue about. It's about the Word of God's all about bringing us into His life and in His goodness and in joy and all the things that were purchased for us at Calvary. But the cross, the message of the cross without the resurrection is not the gospel. It wouldn't be the gospel because gospel means good news. He died. That's not good news. That's bad news. He died. Well, my condolences. I'm so sorry. I'm so sad. Isn't it? None of the disciples even really got it till after he rose up from the dead. They, they were, after he rose up from the dead, they were still wondering. A couple of women got it. The women always get it first. A couple of women. A couple of women. Looking at the guys going, man, you guys are pathetic. Unbelievable. But oh, what happened on the day of Pentecost? Because we don't, we're not leaving any part of this out. People want to leave it out. They want, they want to dichotomize God's word and the glorious thing that God has given to us and his wonderful salvation. If you did be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Woo! Where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. He said unto my, my Lord said unto, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand. Until I make your enemies your footstool. That's a repeated thing. Jesus said it in Mark 14. You know, it's declared also by Peter in Acts chapter 2. It's declared uh, also in Hebrews three times. The book of Hebrews three times. What happened? What happened? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Jesus seated at the right hand until his enemies are made his footstool. Oh, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. I'm praying continually that the Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ would give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you would know what happened. When he raised up Jesus from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly realm, so that your eyes would be opened so that you can understand the riches of his glory which has been given to you. You're his, you, because he, you gotta, he wants you to understand the inheritance he has in you. There's an inheritance that God's got in you that he's placed within you out of the riches of his glory so that you can understand what is the exceeding greatness of his power that was given to you when God raised him up and set him at his own right hand in the heaven places far above exceeding greatness of his power given to you given to you given to you huh given to you given to me it testifies to the resurrection. Amen. I got resurrection power right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. If you're bound in sin and torment, we can set you free right now. Amen. We can turn you from darkness to light. Yes. From the power of Satan to the power of God. Yes. From life, from death to life. Right now. If you've got sickness and disease in your body and you believe, that God has given us the authority to speak the word. If you don't believe, forget about it. If you're waiting for Jesus to come, you just have to wait till he comes then. So somebody said, I said to someone, do you believe that God will heal you right now? Well, I believe he can. Do you believe that he will? Oh, I'm sure that he could. Do you believe that he would move through my life right now, that there is the power present right now at this moment to deliver? I'm not sure. I don't know that it works that way. Well, fine, then there's nothing for you. And then some people say it because they just want to be polite. They don't want to create an argument. They say, yeah, but they don't mean a single word of it. They never get healed. They never get healed. The hardest people to see get a miracle is Pentecostals. Hardest people on the planet for a miracle to happen in their life, people who are Pentecostal, because they're supposed to go do miracles. <laughs> they're supposed to be living in divine help already, health already. 
Huh? Baptist, easy, get them healed. Most easiest to get of all to get healed, Roman Catholics. <laughs> Roman Catholics. The ones that everybody say are just completely, you know, off in the whatever. Roman Catholics, get them easy, easy. It's true. We got two girls right here that were raised Roman Catholic. Get Roman Catholics born again, they get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Watch out, devil! Here come the baptized in the Holy Ghost converted Roman Catholics. It's true. What will you believe about him today? Has nothing to do with Easter eggs? Has no, you, you stained your fingers for nothing. Has nothing to do. He has nothing to do with Easter bunnies. <laughs> Jesus loves you so much. He's proven it. He bore your sins in his own body on the tree. Hallelujah. He wants, to, he wants to give you communion today. He wants to give you communion today. He wants to personally serve you communion so that you can drink his blood and eat his flesh, which means that you now dwell in him and he dwells in you. John chapter 6, verse 53, read it. That is the conclusion of what it means to eat his flesh and drink his blood. John 6, 53. You don't have to turn there. I just want you to, I just, I just try to give people scripture references so that they just can kind of understand I'm not making this up as I go. You know? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you then be risen with Christ, this is the resurrection. Yes. We're all celebrating Jesus rose from the dead. Good. Which means that you rose from the dead. Amen. That you've been raised up together with him and you're celebrating this resurrection life. We're new creations, new creatures, old things have passed away, everything is new. And now we seek those things which are at the right hand of the Father, the right hand of the majesty on high. When he was exalted at the right hand of the Father and glorified, he poured out this which you both see and hear, says the, says the Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 2 and verse 33. This wonderful, the expression of the glory and the majesty of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. A power and divine authority. And we still are celebrating all of this all together Amen. today. What I don't understand is why people don't celebrate the ascension. You know, 40 days later. That would be May 20th this year. Because actually Passover, or what we would call, quote unquote, the Resurrection Sunday was last week. You with me? Yes. We're off the rockers. <laughs> We're off our calendars. Are you with me? We don't even keep the calendar correct. But that wouldn't, it doesn't matter. I'm not getting into that. Because it's not what it's about. Days and observing days and times and seasons. I'm afraid of you, says Paul. It's supposed to be the revelation of the reality of a changed life, a translation out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the dear son. Colossians 1.13. Colossians 1.13. Huh? Huh? Look at it. Look at it, and then I'm going to close it. I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. So that you'll come back tonight. And if we keep you too long, you might not come back tonight. So I said, why are you always in church? Because it's heaven. It's the meeting place. It's heaven. Read Hebrews chapter 12, begin verse 20. It's heaven. I love being in heaven. Because Christ Jesus stands in a special way in the media, in the church. A special way. Look at Revelation chapter 1. He does. His church. He's placed in his church. Miracles. Amen. Kiss of healing. Yes. Diverse times. Interpretation yes. times. I love getting in the flow. Not religion. Not that for showmanship and for entertainment to amuse people. The splendor and the exploits of the movings of the power of God that is superior to everything natural. Where we wait as God heals people and transforms people's lives and strengthens people and empowers them and prepares them to go into all the regions of the world to preach the gospel with signs and wonders and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost so that men's faith will not be in man and in the excellence of speech but in the power of God. Yes, hallelujah. 
ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, the majesty on high. That's what's happening every day, this longing. The Lord, I want to know you more. To know you in the power of your resurrection. To know you, the full display of it. Let me just finish reading that verse in Colossians. Are you looking at it? Everybody yes. looking at it? You got your Bible? Yes. Never before in all history has so many people had the opportunity to have so many Bibles and so many different translations and, and read to them by so, in so many different formats. CD, uh, iTunes, uh, and the list goes on. Alexander Scorby's reading the Bible <laughs> all over the planet right now on, on iTunes. Never before has the Word of God been so available. Take advantage of it. Get in. Get in. The Lord wants to put your reservation in today. Do you have a, your place reserved in heaven, kept by the power of God? Mm -mm -mm. The Lord says, verse 2, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. For you're dead. And your life is hid with God in Christ, so that when Christ, who is your life, when he appears, you will also appear with him in glory. That's where you're going to see me. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I know I told you Colossians 1.13. Didn't I? I told you that. I forgot. I'm sorry. Let's read that one too. <laughs> Just cross the street, Colossians 1.13. <laughs> it's what resurrection is about. It's what it means. Right here. Look at verse that. Look at verse 13. He has delivered me from the power of darkness. And I've been translated. Somebody, I want to be said, somebody said, I want to be translated. You get translated right now. Yes. I have a big vision in God. People get freaked out when I say these kind of things, but you just got to understand, I get this stuff from God by provable examples in the Word, okay? My mission's plan for Saudi Arabia is to show up on Mecca at Ramadan on the platform and take the microphone, huh, from the, the, from the Amin who's speaking and start talking about Jesus. And then... Before they grab me, disappear. Okay, now you're with me, with me, okay? So here it is. I'm going to get translated in, because so I never get through the crowds of millions to get up on the platform in the first place, right? Even if I have all the garb on. So I got to get translated in. So I'm going for this. I'm, I'm moving into translation. I'm moving into the authority and the power. I'm seeking things that are above. I want this, I want this superior to the natural. I'm into, come on, man. I'm into raising the dead, walking on the water, commanding the wind and the waves. Are you with me? Huh? Listen, I'm into this translation, caught up in the heaven, visions, dreams, huh? demonstration of power. That's why I'm over in this realm over here. That's why I, I want nothing to do with darkness. I'm just captivated with being a representative of the kingdom. I'm into the kingdom, the power of the kingdom. <laughs> it's not a form of godliness and denying the power. I'm talking about the power, the displayed power. The revealed power of Jesus, who, by the way, said, I'm going to take you to a whole other dimension because you're going to do greater works than I'm, than I'm doing. Wow. Just power. So, get, see, translate it in, right? Translate it in. Take the microphone. They try to grab me, okay? Disappear, translate it out. Jesus, was, Jesus disappeared many times uh, when they tried. Look, when a bunch of Jews are surrounding you to lay hold on you and you slip through their hands, you disappeared, okay? Because they got you by the teeth. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Believe me, okay? Huh? Yes. Disappear. Give them about 15 minutes to think about it. <laughs> then, poof, right back in. Take it up. Altar call. All of Saudi Arabia. Because all, you know, all the kings, all of them are there. For I'm done, right? Everybody's there. You talk about so much wealth. I'm trying to convince Father of this. You talk about so much wealth that it would immediately be released into the kingdom. <laughs> but... And that's spectacular. And you say, well, that's really, you know, that's really out there. But it's, it's valid. It's valid. But the beautiful thing is, is you can have a translation right now. You can have a translation right now. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the dear son. Right now. Oh, Thank you. 
right now. Hallelujah. Right now. Ahora. Now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord just wants to demonstrate His power here right now. He wants to demonstrate His life-changing power to change you from an old person to a new person. From an old creature, from an old man to a new man. Mm -hmm. That as Christ was raised up from the dead, you should also walk in newness of life. Amen. Romans 6, 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The old man crucified, yes. new man risen from yes. the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to work his power in your life right now. At this very moment. Sickness or disease in your body. He wants to cure it. Huh? It all get cured just as it get, it get cured just as you respond to him. Just as you it's just as you listen. We see so many people healed and set free just as the word is going forward, just as they're listening. Without laying hands on them, just as they're listening. God's not left you out of his goodness. He'll bless you and prosper you. Somebody said somebody's trying to hold me back from having all the good things. Nobody hold me back. <laughs> but you. You let God get on your side, I'm going to tell you right now. Who can prevent what he wants to do through you? Father wants to bless you. Everybody stand yes. with me. Yes. Stand up here with me. Hallelujah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. The prophet Z used to be the baby. Now he looks like a giant. <laughs> Compared to the mighty man of God, John Samuel. Hallelujah. Okay, would you let the Lord prophesy over you today? Will you let him shout shouts of grace over your life? Because he wants to. Would you let him proclaim, to you, proclaim over you the greatness that he's purposed? To give you and reveal through your life. It, all you gotta do is just come to him, just respond to him. And, it's, and then say, Lord, I'm with you. I'm on your team. I'm yours. I'm your servant. I, want, I just want to be taught by you. I, and then, they, then you're gonna have to learn how to say no to the stuff that is in this culture. This is a perverted culture. One of the first things you're gonna have to do is learn how to shut your television off. Because many people are addicted to that thing. And it is just a, it is a window into hell. It's a window into the demonic, for the most part. But the Lord wants to touch you right now. He wants to heal you. Let him heal you. Let him touch you. Let him touch you right now. He wants to touch you right now. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you've been involved in. It does not matter. He wants to touch you now. He wants to touch you in a way to where you know God touched me. God touched me. God touched me. God wants to touch you right now. Let him touch you right where you stand. Let him touch you. Let him feel you right now. Let him change everything about your life. Let him change your desires. He wants to change your desires. He wants to change your affections. He wants to heal you of all the offense. He wants to heal you of all the mistreatment you've had from other people. Quit being surprised. That's all men know how to do is mistreat each other. <laughs> Quit acting like it should have been something different. Unless they redeemed. Made a new creature. He wants to heal you of your unforgiveness. He wants to show mercy upon your life. Amen. God writes to you as it were a handwritten invitation right now written out in his blood sent by the power and the authority of heaven for you to step in to his kingdom there is no way into the kingdom of God but through the door Christ Jesus there is no way entrance there is no other entrance in there's no window to climb through. There's no other way to try to get in. Only thieves and robbers are trying to get in some other way. There is no other access into the kingdom but by the door. 
Christ Jesus, the door stands right now pleading with you. God the Holy Ghost has brought you here. You came to this place today by the power of God's love. He's drawn you to Christ Jesus. Do not refuse him today. Do not refuse him. There may be people in here that you've known God or you've known about God and you've, you've believed in Him to the best of your understanding, to the best of your ability, but you've never been willing to walk with God. You, don't, you can't, you, there's no real proof that you walk with God. Enoch walked with God. Elijah walked with God. Paul the Apostle walked with God. God wants you to walk and learn to teach you and show you how to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. That means you walk with God. You're taught by Him. You represent Him. You're, all, you're clearly seen to be a part of that which He's doing. Christ Jesus stands at the door of your heart right now knocking. He's knocking. He's knocking, He's saying, open up your life, open up your heart. Believe what I'm telling you, that's what he's saying. Believe what I'm telling you, believe who, I'm, who I am. Believe those things which you've already spoken and agreed with. Believe them, and I will come in, and I will sup with you. I'll have, I'll have dinner with you, so to speak. I'll have a relationship with you, an intimacy with you, and you with me. Yes. Woo! It's one thing to know that He loves us and that we're being loved by Him. It's another thing to step into His grace where we get to love Him back. It's one thing to recognize that His thoughts are towards us. It's another thing to be able to communicate with that. Yes. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation for you. That's deliverance from sickness, disease, poverty, oppression, torment, deception, whatever the case may be. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Respond. God wants to come. He wants to be your God. He wants you to be his people. He wants to change you. He wants to destroy every power of affliction. Anybody in this place today, you need deliverance. You need, you need the power of God to invade your life. You need to be set free. Christ Jesus is here. God is calling. He's here to prove that His Word is the same today as it was 2,000 years ago. It was, it was the day that He created man in His image and His likeness. God, the Holy Ghost, is here to prove Himself to you. Hallelujah. All you have to do is step out from your seat and come. Those of you that are in another nation watching us right now on the web, huh? you can't step out and come to this altar, but you can just agree. You can step out and agree right now, and you can call on the name of Jesus, even sitting there in Kashmir, even sitting in North Korea, wherever you're at right now. The Lord will transform you. Jesus is there to heal you, to save you, to deliver you. He comes, he comes on the wind of his word. He comes on the wind of his word. Wherever his word is proclaimed, he's there. Just like the North Korean man who gave his life to Jesus standing there and he tried to give me the money, he came to buy and purchase medication for his family. I'm not sure who it was that was sick in his house, but there was someone who was sick in his house. He was coming to purchase medication. And I told him, this day has salvation, has the living God come to you into your house. And he believed. And he took the money. I said, this day, have they not only been delivered by the power of God and names written in the Lamb's book of life and, and then made a new creation. But they're, they're healed. They're set free from every sickness and every disease, every torment. And he tried, he believed. And, his, and I'll tell you his house. And he tried to give me the money right there as an offering. I should have gone ahead and taken it. I should have gone ahead and taken it. I just didn't feel like I needed to take it at the time. I know you've had many presentations of the gospel. But have you ever given yourself to what God has to say? Mm. Because His Word, Christ Jesus, 
has said, has said very clearly everything that needs to be said. Needs no interpreter. Somebody said, oh, the whole Bible's up for interpretation. Jesus is not up for interpretation. He did. He said those things which are described in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's not up for interpretation. There is more historical proofs of who Jesus was and what he said than there was, than there is of any event in history. More historical proofs of Jesus than there was even a Roman Empire. You name it, whatever it is. Today, will you respond to Jesus? Look, not half-heartedly, not with part of your life, not with certain categories, because I'm telling you right now, that is not salvation. That is not what Jesus did. To turn your life over to him, to be crucified together with him, to be buried, to you no longer live. It's Christ who lives. It's radically changed to receive the life of Jesus so that you can live the life of Jesus. Today, he's calling you. And the power of God is here to make that a living reality, to make that something that you can see and feel and do. Father, I thank you for your mercy upon this people, upon this assembly. Oh God, I thank you for this wonderful good news that you brought to us, the power and the authority of your word that is brought to us by the Holy Ghost. For the, wonder, the sound of it going out via face stream and YouTube and the web right now to thousands of people. I thank you, Father, for those who are standing in this place who pledged their life to you who've given their life over to you and who refuse to be a false witness. Yes, yes. Who refuse to be a misrepresentation. For Lord, we know how you feel about false witness and misrepresentation. I'd rather be a homosexual than a false witness of Jesus Christ. I'd rather be a debauched person of every unethical thing you can imagine than to be a misrepresentation of the kingdom. Because I'm just telling you, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse. I said there's nothing worse. And he's standing at the door of the hearts of people in this place right now. I know he is. And he's knocking at the door of your heart right now. And he's saying, open up. He's saying this. Jesus doesn't say that just to the lost. He's saying that to the church, the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. The door of your heart knocking. And if you'll open up your heart, I'll come in with you and I'll commune with you and I'll fellowship with you. Today, this is a place of separation and consecration to the Lord, of surrendering of your life over to God and letting Him make something glorious out of you. Because at this instant, at that moment that you say yes to Jesus, He becomes your righteousness, He becomes your sanctification, He becomes your redemption, He becomes your glorification. He becomes everything that you possibly could ever want, ever have, because you get to step into him as he steps into you. <laughs> You're not under the power of culture, not under the power of a social system. You're not under the power of men anymore. What an amazing thing God has done for us. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, dear, salvation comes to your house today, right now. <laughs> Jesus, thank you for your glory. Thank you for your anointing on your dear daughter. And I deliver you from everything of the past and every power of darkness and everything, every chain of sin broken off of you. Every hurt and every pain, every destruction no longer able to torment you. In Jesus' mighty name, changed. Healed. Sitaropakina mondanina. Healed. Anger and rage will no longer be able to victimize you. Uh uh. Will no longer be able to overrun your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
From this day forward, a servant of Jesus Christ and no longer a servant of darkness and of death. In Jesus' name, set free. Masete. Monday, a cool at night. I'm by the say, Ah, my son. Jemanea. Filled with heaven. 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 Filled Oh, how he loves you. Strengthen. Supplied with every good thing of the Spirit. Supplied with divine power and strength. Supplied with a life that you only thought existed. Now you're going to see the revelation and the power of it. Mombanda ceased. Marist. Everything made new. 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 <laughs> Heaven! Heaven! Heaven, resurrection life, and resurrection power. Heaven. Heaven. The heartache goes, and the glory comes. Kutara as libidist, molasadest, molasaderinate, halamandef. Si statara baba, si statara baba, si si si. Si statara baba, si si si. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for the anointing. Whatever it is that you desire, Father, I'm going to answer it right now. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. You and your house. You and your house. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You and your house. Yes. Bless with everything that belongs to heaven. The great moving of the power of God in Jesus' name into your house. This day. Healed right now in Jesus' name. Healed right now in Jesus' name. Healing. Healing to you and your house right now. Tell me what is it that you need. Tell me, I want you to tell me what's... Yeah. It happens now. Put your hand on your chest right there. It happens right now. It happens right now. Did that peace come? Yes. Hmm? That thing that would try to hold you back, that thing that would try to hold on to you called hurt, called offense. It's not really just a thought. It's not just a, remember, a remembrance of an action or an event. It literally becomes an oppressing evil spirit. And I tell you right now, it is no longer there. It's driven forth from you, you the child of the living God. And simply by coming to Jesus and saying, Lord, you might deliver, deliver me. He does so. Amen. 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 
this day to your sister. This day, you no longer live under it, under its influence or effect, because it'll hold you back. It's like being stuck in the mud up past the axle. Yes, Lord. Huh? Yes. You can't move on. You can't Amen. do the things that God's called you to do. And there's a great anointing upon your life. Amen. Amen. There's a great call of the, of the Spirit of God upon your life. You're Amen. going to step in and start moving Amen. forward Amen. in the things of the ministry of Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. and the authority of heaven. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's someone in here right now that needs a miracle in your finances that you don't know where the next financial blessing is going to come. There's a miracle in the house right now for your financial blessing. There is a miracle for you to receive that God wants to bless everything that you've put your hand to. And he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed and you shall be delightsome in the land, says the Lord of hosts. Who's in here that needs this miracle? Who has been crying out to the Lord to say, Lord, I need the blessing that I've been faithful in the house. I've been faithful in tithing. I've been faithful in putting the things of God first. God has that miracle for you today. It is in the house for you. You just need to receive. You need to receive all that he has for you and come up. I want to pray for you. I want this <laughs> to be the day that the Lord <laughs> has you rebuked the devourer. Everybody's here. Stay here. Everybody who, who you, you need a financial miracle. You need a finance. I mean, it's just, you need a financial miracle. There's just not, there's not enough. God will multiply what little you have that you'll give him. So just come up here. Just press in on the front. Just press in. And I'm going to tell you, what God, God's going to work a miracle for you right now. Allie's going to lay hands on you and she's going to proclaim the blessing in Jesus' name. I promise you, you will be blessed. I promise you. Just receive. Just receive. I feel the power of God at working a miracle right now. God's working a miracle for you right now. Because we're getting a miracle for you now. Receive it. Right now. Father, we thank you for the transformation of Kim's life. She looks like a different person than she did last week. Hallelujah. Yeah, automismo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bendecida. Hallelujah. Automismo. Hallelujah. From the crown of the head to the soles of your feet. Blessed, blessed, blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed, blessed. Father, we want your blessing now. Father, we want your blessing now. Father, I want the Hispanics uh, uh, that, that love you here in San Diego, every one of them blessed financially. I speak prosperity into your life. Healing and prosperity into your life. Changed. Uh, changed. Morimona. Changed. Hallelujah. Changed. Blessed. Changed. Changed. Did you, did you call Naveen? Good. Good. Joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now in the name of Jesus, wellspring of joy. A wellspring of peace. Now in Jesus' name. Can't go back. Can't go back. Can't go back. There can't be many gods or any gods but one God. Can't go back. Because you'll never know the glory of it if you try to go back. 
Satan, you leave the property of God alone. Satan, you foul spirit of destruction, you predator of the souls of men. I destroy your power now in Jesus' name from off of this life. You listen to me in Jesus' name and you take your filthy hands off this life and off the property of God. Father, we thank you that the same way you touched our lives and saved us, oh God, you change her now. And every harassing, tormenting power of deception will not be able to sway her confidence in you. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you that you come and you reveal yourself. And every harassing, tormenting thing loses all of its power. Now I bless you. Now I bless you. Look at me. Now I bless you and your house, your husband, and your children, and your family. I bless you. The blessing of the living God. The blessing of Christ Jesus. Living God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What's up? Uh-huh. Oh, Lord Jesus. Touch baby. What's baby? ¿Cómo se llama? Maya. Maya. Muy bonita. Ooh. Maya. Maya speaks English. Huh? Little? In nombre de Cristo, <laughs> bendecida, <laughs> blessed, blessed, blessed in her body. Now in Jesus' name, I command this body to be everything that God purposed it to be, whole and healthy from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, organs repaired, right. tissue repaired, now in the name of Jesus, this body will be made whole and be a living testimony of the miracle power yes. that is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Maya, she will be blessed all the days of her life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that the native people of America may sing the high praises of the living God from every tribe and every tongue. Hallelujah. Te ama, te ama Maya, te ama mucho. Bless her Jesus. Oh, Maneo Romoshi, I'm wing it. I ron and indoli me she calona, Marida Stepina Numbersa. Ah, Father, may Henry dance the dance of the mighty. May he dance the dance of the victorious. May he dance the dance of the overcomer. May he dance the dance of the strong man in you. Oh, God. May dance the dance of the joyful. Ha, 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 ha. May dance the dance of those baptized in the fire and presence of God. Ha, 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 ha. Monday she lived, Hey, the most. Blessed. Blessed. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Spirit, soul, and body. Blessed in Jesus' name. Transformed by the power of God, strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Heal me. What's wrong with you? Feet. Your feet healed in Jesus. What's wrong with your feet? Healing to your feet now in Jesus' name. If you want to know. Yeah. No spirits. God is the greatest podiatrist. That has ever existed. Amen. 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 From your foot to his mouth. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your feet are healed. Amen. Now. In 
you blessed to know him, to know Christ Jesus, to know him, to know him inside of you. And it's beautiful. To know him in his love, to know him in his goodness, to know him in his holiness, to know him in his purity, to know him in his righteousness, to know him in the way he thinks, his thoughts, the way he views things, the way he perceives things, the way he interacts with things. Amen. 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 Bless you. You too, brother. Thank you. Amanda Sakiste, but it's the Andals. The wind of heaven. God takes our life and every day develops us to have every good thing that he possesses, to walk just like him, to be just like him. And he works within us our life. One of the most beautiful miracles is he works within our life a desire to be that, a hunger to know him. That God, that's divine. A hunger to be right, a hunger to do what's right. kept all the days of your life, kept by the power of God in Jesus' name, kept all the days of your life, kept by the power of God, where no unholy thing can touch you, for you'll live your life out as the vessel of the Most High, a place where the anointing of His presence is revealed, a place where the well springs turn continually into rivers. Uh, great faith in Jesus name fall and hurt yourself huh huh did you fall and hurt yourself oh uh, it was itchy last night okay yeah father I thank you for touching Elaine's life yeah. your heart Father, I ask you, God called Elaine, Lord, to live, oh God, with the excitement and the vision the day she came out of Bible school, that it all start again. It all start again, in Jesus' name. That it all start again. Oh, Mama. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that every person in this building watching me right now online, that you will live the rest of the days of your life in his manifest presence. That you will be blessed with his manifest presence. And it be for you the discernment and the ability to know what God wants you to do and what he doesn't want you to do, what's right and what's wrong. His manifest presence. Tonight we'll be back here at 6 o'clock. We'll be having communion tonight. It's a, it's a sacred time in God. You may stay today here in this place just as long as you want. Recognize that there are people who are being touched by the Lord right now. And uh, be, be reverent towards God and what He's doing. As you start to move out of this place to go wherever it is that you're getting ready to go to, Make sure that you don't just pass by somebody, but grab them, you hug them, you tell them that you love them. Husbands, make sure you do that with your wife. Wife, make sure you do that with your husband. Children, make sure you do that with your parents. Parents, make sure you do that with your children. Just stay over here in this glory, because Father's got a whole lot more if you'll stay here. If you don't, if you just keep coming in and out, you never really get to move forward. 
You never get to really understand what it's all about. But if you come in here and you'll stay here and you'll remain in this manifest presence of God, grow stronger and stronger. Huh? In such a, such a way you'll never want to go out anymore. Amen. Yeah.